Right, I'm here in Alan Perry's gaming room here, and we've got Jervis Johnson and the two Perrys, and we're going to talk a bit about Valor and Fortitude, which is the new, well, the updated game that you're bringing to War Games Illustrated. Uh, do you want to just give a bit of an overview of what the game's about and how it came about? Okay, uh, yes, yes. Uh, um, Valor and Fortitude basically started out as uh, a set of rules uh, that we were going to use ourselves, really, to mm. play games um, uh, of, like this one that you can see in front of you. Uh, generally, when we're playing games, it's a big war games table, lots of toy soldiers, and uh, half a dozen or so players, four to six players, oh, so, usually. Yeah. 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 Uh, but usually on, usually on a fairly tight schedule. Yeah, so we'd you know, kick off at six, <coughs> uh, six for, seven, yeah, and then, yeah. time for a curry and... Uh, Finish by 11. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, so the rules need to be quite quick uh, and fast playing. Um, uh, and uh, so we started out doing that, but we realised, uh, while I was working on the rules, I wanted to come up with a set of rules that were, they'd be very short, they'd only fit onto four pages and things like that, because I didn't want to have there the, to be loads of paper or uh, big thick rule books for us to have to reference. No, did we? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no. um, so uh, uh, we thought, well, actually, these would be a cool thing to put up just for free on the web. They're very short. People can download them if they want to use them. We'll put them up on the Perry Miniatures mm. website. Um, and we could do army sheets for the Perry Miniatures ranges. Um, and we were chatting to Dan, uh, the editor of War Games Illustrated, about this, and he expressed an interest in publishing them in the magazine, basically. So uh, that's how they ended up being published in War Games Illustrated and appearing on our website. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And we've now kind of reached the year anniversary point of the initial release, and with it we have a new version of Valor and Fortitude, or more a, a modified version. Um, and you've been playtesting this, and other people since they've got their hands on it have been playtesting it. What sort of process has that been, and how, how have you... Like looked at the new rules and tried to make them a little bit more easy to follow for players? Uh, well, I think that I got a lot of really useful feedback once the rules came out. And abuse. Uh, hmm? And abuse. And as it was a certain... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no. Be fair. no, no. I don't think you did, actually. No, no. Uh, though, yeah, being next Games Workshop, I'm used to receiving a certain amount of abuse. Uh, but, um, uh, no, it was, it, was, it was helpful feedback, really. And uh, um, uh, it... There were a number of, uh, of, of the mechanics in the first version of the game, in particular the way that uh, uh, the units broke and ran away and what happened to brigades when they lost a combat, uh, that really needed a bit of looking at, really. Um, so I started updating the rules, and I also did quite a lot of errata on the rules that were available on the website, and pretty soon mm. ended up with version 1.5. <laughs> uh, yeah. And we thought, actually, it'd be better just to kind of like just do a complete new second edition, try and get everything right... Yeah. Uh, and then that's the second and final version. That's my goal not here. Until, no, yeah, not tinker with it anymore. Until the Leave third it alone. Edition. No, no, no more additions <laughs> after this one. Uh, yeah, then go forward, we can look at doing army sheets for different periods. Yes. So that was, that was kind of the starting mm. point, I guess. Mm. And then you had uh, started with your, camp your campaign, 1813 campaign. That's right. Which is quite a good test for the rules in the and the campaign. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I mean, we do a lot of our, our playtesting with our group by uh, setting up campaigns, basically. Yeah. So we'll, we'll uh, run a campaign online via email with a map. Uh, and uh, when battles come up in the campaign, we transfer them over to the war games table and play them out. So it kind of like, what it did was it meant that we were going to be fighting a series of battles. I knew that the campaign would force us to fight battles. Uh, and I had to be ready with the latest version of the rules and the latest version of the army sheet. Uh, and uh, Michael and Alan needed to be ready with the toy soldiers. <laughs> yeah, know, I mean, that, that was time table. for 18, 1813 campaign that you ran. Yeah. Um, I had all the toy soldiers anyway. Uh, I ran a campaign on the Peninsula War, which was um, a year later, was it a year, a year later? I think, no, less it? than that, actually. Less than we've, year, we've, yeah. Yeah, few, I was going to do months, this, actually, and then you, you thought you, you want to do the campaign, so I thought, brilliant, I want to join in the campaign, uh, and I was still getting figures painted up for this particular campaign, the yeah. Peninsula War campaign. So it was quite a nice little respite while I got everything ready for this campaign. Yeah. And so we filled, yeah. I ran that one. Yeah. So we've done two campaigns in two years, haven't we? Well, no, not, two, well, not in, one, in, in, one, in one year. One I mean, year we, one, we fought yeah. a lot of battles. Yeah. Um, a campaign system uh, worked well. I, mean, I think the, the, I mean, the Peninsula War campaign, I have to say, was a, was a <coughs> highlight. It was, that was a great campaign. 
uh, with lots of silly things going on there, which you get, you get great stories coming yeah. out of the campaign. And that, uh, actually, great all, scenarios. Again, so we're, we're, I'm still posting up the battles on the website. So um, uh, when you see this, there'll probably be another two or three battles yeah. to sort of uh, show. I think it's worth saying as well that not all the battles were fought with Valor and Fortitude in the, no, in the second no. campaign in particular. Uh, if I wasn't around and wasn't available or I was working on the rules, then battles would be fought with Black Powder. Mm. I don't think we use any other No, it's just Black Powder history. because yeah. we sort of used it in the past and a few other people were. So we could play up without Jervis. Um, I think a scramble our brains we use a third <laughs> set of rules oh, as yeah, well. Yeah, two, yeah. Is, yeah, two was enough. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm, I'm famous for tinkering with rules. I mean, I, I, there's, uh, uh, you know, I often basically just change things in the middle of the game. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it, it means that now that I've, the rules are going into the magazine and they're finished and they're published, that's great for all of us, basically, yeah. because it means I don't have to worry about like trying to fix things with them, but also everybody else can just like relax, read the rules relax. and use them <laughs> yeah. and know that I'm not going to suddenly go, oh, actually, I've decided no. to, uh, to do this, that or the other. Yeah. If you had any exciting moments from there yeah. where you particularly enjoyed the rules. Well, I mean, ca campaigns uh, really shot the characters or the people playing. Um, uh, Alessio Cavatori was a <laughs> French commander, overall commander. And it, in normal campaigns, almost every campaign we've played, he's always been very um, sort of adventurous. Adventurous, adventurous and maybe a little bit too keen on advancing, even across the map. Gung ho. And. Uh, Obviously, he did this this time as well. A little cautious at times, but then, yeah, he was just throw caution to the wind and then sort of... And that sort of character comes out on campaigns. Uh, other <laughs> characters, sometimes very cautious, like um, <laughs> Chris Bone, uh, who's a good mate of ours. But he, he hasn't played that much uh, around here. And he put his, squares, uh, his um, troops into square about two moves before they should three moves before they should have been in square because they'd getting shot up by artillery and they just vanished off the um, yeah. face of the earth really. Well that right beginning of the game, game wasn't it? He, it, he, was, that, it, it was right at the start of the game. It was, the, he, the French it, cavalry in the distance yeah. Yeah, yeah. in the distance. <laughs> so he all. thought he'd better form square, <laughs> not realising that they probably yeah. won't get there for a certain, quite a few time, yeah. quite a long time yeah. and uh, yeah. Giving the French time to form a huge massed battery oh, of battery and then just lost the yeah. the forest, <laughs> pieces. And they lost that flank yeah. and then they lost the battle, didn't they? <laughs> well the other thing that I remember is the is the Spanish guerrillas and how oh, incredibly yeah. effective yeah. they were because they were almost like a throwaway unit, really, they were, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a throwaway like, unit. Yeah. And yeah. Steve May was using them because he likes the throwaway troops and uh, <laughs> particularly infantry, but I thought uh, give them some uh, Reasonable cavalry, but uh, they only get sort of guerrilla kind of cavalry. Yeah. But he did wonders with them. Yeah, he's a uh, really they were, they were, real nuisance. Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> well, they, they kept they kept almost winning the battle because yeah. there, there was one battle where uh, it was fought down the length of the table, and the French were trying to escape in, in, in the nature of the campaign. Uh, and there, but there was this big British column kind of like marching yeah. towards them, uh, and Steve's uh, guerrillas managed to zoom round the flanks, yeah. get in front of the French, and slow them down just yeah. enough, selling well, their, their lives yeah. dearly. While the British basically kind of dawdled their way up the road. <laughs> <laughs> until, you know, and by the time the British arrived, the, Fr the French, French army were... was basically in disarray. Yeah, they were. It was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. having uh, tried to deal with all the, the Spanish guerrillas. Yeah. And, the, and the British turned up and just finished them off. And I think that <laughs> happened in another game as well. There was another one. Yeah, there was another yeah. Sort of very similar yeah, situation, yeah. Yeah, yeah Steve's very good at doing that, kind of infiltrating the yeah. enemy yeah. army. Yeah. I guess he likes Valor and Fortitude then, because you can move a lot more and kind of get around. Uh, his but... guerrilla cavalry, well, because yeah. they've got the extra six inches, because they're so, Yeah, fast. that's what they, they're called, um, swift. They have a special rule, which lets they're not really, really quite, yeah. They, they, they move, Pink, they move very quickly. Yeah. But there was also the, the attack on the um, supply wagon, which was the yes. skirmish game. Which was the, it. yeah, yeah, small sort of company-sized action we used with uh, yeah. Valor and Fortitude. And, uh, yeah, again, the guerrillas were a pain in that because they were mostly hidden troops. And uh, Valor Fortitude would work really well with that because it's fire first. So you could do lots of uh, ambushes, uh, which was the main thing of that particular Okay. Yeah, it was a great test. And then we did in the previous campaign, we had one, well, the previous campaign had this idea of there being cavalry vedettes, which you could use to kind of like mm. scout and get <coughs> ahead of your army. And then the, the rules that I'd written for the campaign, they, they really didn't fight. They were just like, they were just, they were just, they'd spot things. But we had this one bit where there was this incredibly important city, which was going to be almost like side the campaign. And the only thing that was that met there were cavalry vedettes from yeah. each side. So we said, well, let's not just 
roll dice, which is what the court said. See, who, who did. We, we, tramp, we made up a scenario. It was last year again, wasn't it? It was, it was but, but we scaled up the table then. So it was kind of like, almost like the, uh, the you know, like instead of it being a battlefield like this, it would be like there was a, a, a city over here and almost like a kind of, they, they, the distances were, were imagined to be quite mm. large with the cavalry, these little cavalry units yeah. zooming around the battlefield, fighting each yeah, other to see fun. who could yeah, get control yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so again, we found that the rules with a little bit of thought would, uh, would yeah. allow us to take mm. something from the campaign and make an interesting little oh, yeah. almost sub-game out of it, really. I mean, as, as players, of you play a lot of both games now, <coughs> those two kind of games, what mm. would you say are the key differences between the two that you've really noticed over those games? Uh, you get a lot more troop movement with uh, Valor Fortitude. <laughs> you, you get yeah. less um, troops standing around. Um, yeah. Everything is which is always a problem. With, uh, not a problem with black powder, but I mean it's something that would have happened anyway. But uh, and sometimes it's great seeing your opponent just sit there, turn, turn after turn. <laughs> but no, you don't tend to get that. You don't yeah. get as much. No, you do a little bit, but not not nearly as much. Not that's that's true. It's, yeah, it tends to it tends to move a bit quicker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and I think also it's got kind of like integrated into it the a kind of almost like an army level morale system mm. so um, you've got a, a, a built-in system for how uh, units break but then also how brigades are affected and then finally at the end of the game how the victory point system works to kind of reflect what's gone on in the battle to decide who the winner is um, so those are intrinsic to the system yeah. um, uh, which makes it quite different it's got the fake cards mm-hmm. uh, uh, but I think that really, because uh, I, I, obviously I, I, I worked designing Black Powder uh, with Rick, uh, and the challenge for me as a rules writer with, uh, with this can, was can I get a complete game, um, a bit like that onto four sides paper, basically. Can, is it possible to compress things? And so I think what that means is that Valor and Fortitude is by necessity a bit more kind of like it's, it's, it's succinct, it's focused, uh, uh, black powder has a lot more kind of like is more space for special rules and uh, and kind of finessing things almost. Mm. It's uh, it, so the experience of playing them is a little bit different, uh, and I think that's a good thing. I mean, they've each got their own things to offer depending on what you're looking for from the game. For sure. And I mean, did you find as players that as the games went on and you got more experience playing it, you started to play differently with the Valor and Fortitude rules? You started to recognise about some of the nuances of shooting and. Yes, yeah. his target and yeah. things like that. Uh, unless you have to change it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Halfway through. But, yeah. uh, no, we did. Yeah, we definitely yeah. got more used to it. Yeah, yeah. Because um, it's gone through quite a few variations and yeah. tweaks and everything. Yeah. So we, we're getting more used to it, yeah. Yeah. But I think that on the whole, I mean, generally when we're playing our games, we're, you, you, you're you driven as much by the history that you've read and it, yeah. you're doing <clears> and the thing ta- that feels tr- right. Trying to do the tactics that... Existed. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, and on the whole, the game rewards those tactics. Mm. Uh, yeah. I think that one of the big differences between the first version of the rules and the second version of the rules is the, uh, is the differences between attack columns and lines. Because I think the first version of the rules, attack columns just tended to come out on top. They were faster and better in fighting. But reading about the period, uh, I mean, the, the attack column was useful for moving up people up quickly, but the line was just a better fighting mm. formation. I think that the second edition rules, I did quite a lot of tinkering to try and kind of get it so that, in general, a line will beat an attack column unless the attack column's got good support and outnumbers the line in order to get the edge. But just one-on-one, you're better off being in a line. The problem with being in a line is that you're slow and unwieldy. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and that took quite a lot of, of work and a lot of the of things where I'd change things from game to game yeah. would mm. be about trying to get that right. Yeah, so you all obviously are passionate about history and you've got your own personal preferences for periods and things like that. When it when it came to creating the game, did you kind of all sit sit around together and discuss possibilities and share exciting options or no, not really. really. We not, didn't no, really. No, no, not really. No, I think it just, it just happened. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean we, the first, just... the very first game we played was the Paraguayan War ones because that's, that's right, what yeah, we'd played. That, yeah. We'd played, yeah. done, done a show ones. at Partizan. Yeah. Um, uh, and I just, uh, I think uh, after it, I said, wait, it was a bit fiddly flicking through the <clears> book to do a demo game. Was it for be black powder? For, using black powder we were using black powder for that yeah. that game, and I said, I bet I could come up with a little short set of rules. 
that would be great for doing demo games, basically, because we wouldn't be doing all of that flicking backwards yeah. and forwards yeah. with the robot. Um, and, and that led us through to starting work, but, but we wanted to get the Napoleonic armies back on the table. That's what I remember, I think. I it think was, it was, an, yeah, because it's your basic ca uh, classic period for a war game set of rules. Yeah. Just and a good place to start, really. Yeah. Then you can branch out for different periods. Uh, absolutely. Um, uh, and then we've ended up just kind of focusing on that pretty much all the way through the the, the period because obviously you've got lots of different armies. There were plenty of things that we could, we could try. And every element had its bonuses and distractions, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, and then in terms of the history, I, 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 I'm a games designer rather than a historian, so my my knowledge of the history of the period, I will I'll, I'll just ask. You know, <laughs> right? uh, uh, I mean, Alan in particular for the Napoleonic period, but whatever it's, we're looking at, yeah, period, kind yeah. of like, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say. How should this work? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what what kind of effect would this unit have had? Is does this seem appropriate? Uh, and be guided by by your knowledge, I think. And the current one you're looking into is Frank Prussian. That's right. Yes, yes. And, Which is and, very handy since I have to have a Frank Prussian range on the go at the moment. Well, ex exactly, exactly. <laughs> so we've just started that process with yeah. me kind of like basically saying to Michael, what types of units should there be? What makes them different? Um, uh, and uh, I think the Franco-Prussian War is going to be a fascinating one to see. Uh, you know, can we kind of like stretch the rules out? Because you've got the first breech-loading rifles, you've got modern artillery starting to to appear, and slightly Metro different uh, kind of machine guns and absolutely machine like. guns. Yeah, uh, and formations being quite different. And, yeah, uh, you know, extend more extended more order, order people lined yeah. out yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. Mm. So seeing how we incorporate those, so we've just started work on that. And it's I think a good example of that mm. kind of stuff. Uh, and the miniatures just starting to come. <laughs> there, as well. yeah. Yeah. yeah, properly. Yeah. So, so I think there's that element of well, if there's new stuff, then obviously, you know, the guys would be ex excited about the miniatures they're making. Uh, and uh, and, be and nice obviously saying, yeah, I can do an army sheet for that. Yeah, that sounds yeah, cool. Exactly. Yeah. I'd like to play a game of that. When yeah. will the models be ready? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the um, army sheet generally before the models, but <laughs> uh, yeah, quite 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 often. Because yeah, uh, but there are other periods as well. So there, there are a few periods that are on top of the list because I get asked quite a lot. Uh, so uh, American Civil War, um, American War of Independence. Uh, and generally, the Seven Years' War and that kind of period seem to be quite don't high on people. Mm. for that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. Seven Years' mm. War. Seven Years' War. We can't read really the table. I haven't got any figures. No, no. As I say, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether that's one that will do. <laughs> I'll see. You. No. Yeah. Find another range for that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah indeed. Anyway, American War of Independence. Yeah. Clearly. Oh yeah. American yeah, Civil yeah. War would be good. Uh, and uh, I, I mean, there are various different periods that we'd be looking at. And I think one of the benefits of the way that we, because the, the army sheets uh, basically we put them up for free and you can just download them. Uh, my plan is to be able to effectively put up beta versions of the army lists and get them out, there. <coughs> uh, and then I can update them very easily based on the feedback that we get in the games that we're playing. So uh, rather than it being just kind of like us and our gang kind of like playtesting the things, actually we can open it up to the public and people can kind of like join in with the process mm. as we're mm. doing things. Yeah. Um, and that for me, that's definitely been a benefit for the second edition rules. So I've got about 20 or 30 playtesters out there who've been enormous help uh, in terms of kind of like, like playtesting the rules, doing things with the rules that we wouldn't necessarily do ourselves asking questions that, that, that aren't questions that would come up in our games. So, um, uh, yeah, the second edition rules owns, owns great debt to the people who are out there who are playing it and letting me know how their games are going. Um, uh, and I'd like to make that as easy as possible for people to join mm -hmm. in with, and I can't see any reason why we shouldn't. Well, I think also you've said uh, the game is designed for these huge tables, but it actually does scale down quite nicely as well. So I think that's definitely going to help people at home who maybe don't have such a big setup as well. Yeah. Uh, it was some of the very first questions I got about, like, can I use these for 15 mil figures? What about the epic ranges and stuff like that? Uh, I've only got a six foot by four foot war games table. Uh, uh, yeah, how do I play a game? And uh, so I've included some notes in the, in the, in the rules about uh, scaling things up and down. Um, uh, but what we found is that it's quite easy. I mean, you can half figure scale the size of units. Uh, uh, working in different figure scales doesn't seem to make terribly much difference at all, really. It just looks a bit different. It's always best to use 28mm pair of miniatures. 
<laughs> the, the, well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, and uh, but I think this is a good point because the game is actually you know designed for the games that we play, uh, so it's bound to work best. Uh, Twenty eight mil, yeah. yeah, with uh, with with <clears throat> those with those miniatures and the support that we're going to do for it will be supporting the Perry Miniatures ranges. Um, but, but I'm going to say also we use it for company size actions. I mean, we did. Uh, we have done uh, actually in the last campaign. I mean, that could be a company, not just a battalion. Uh, yeah, and you can uh, sit just sort of ratio it for, down. You just ratio it down. <clears throat> it doesn't make, make any difference, does it? Yeah, no, a, absolutely. The 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 rules of a pretty much scale or. Nah, uh, Agnostic. There we go. We got there in the end. Uh, uh, it just takes a little bit of thought, uh, and uh, I've also um, uh, you can always email me. The, we have a, 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 a an email address called Valor, and for, well, it'll appear in the sidebar. I'm sure. Hopefully, either there or above our heads <laughs> or something like that. Uh, Valor and Fortitude uh, Rules at um, uh, Gmail dot com. Um, uh, and if you've got any questions or you want to know about how uh, an easy way to play with uh, different figures than the standard Perry 28 miles, just email me and I'll happily uh, explain how you can do it. And explain why they really should be playing with Perry 28 miles. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, your ranges do cover quite a broad period. How far mm. do you think this can go in terms of back mm. in time and closer to the present? Oh, the, you mean the set of rules? Yeah, how far oh, can you push Jervis with uh, the figures well, that you sure can we, carry I'm sure we can push him quite far. Back. <laughs> Maybe even back to the First Crusader, don't they? Yeah, yeah. well, we've talked about War of the Roses, because I'd, I'd yeah. be quite interested to do that. Because, again, it's about seeing uh, how you represent the differences in the different <clears> periods within the core mechanics. Because Valor and Fortitude, basically, the core game rules are how do, you know, units can either be formed up wide, like in a line, or deep, you know, uh, or in a marching column, um, uh, and that kind of like covers a lot of ground, really, from uh, you know the ancient Greeks, you know, right through to the start of World War One, I, I would guess, where you'd start to see those uh, that idea of those kind of like relatively massed formations really starting to disappear. Um, uh, and I, so I can't guarantee it will work in those other periods, but I'm interested in trying to give it to a go. Oh, absolutely, yeah, because. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, uh, yeah, that's why the Franco-Prussian War is so interesting. Mm. I think we've already kind of like you know, been talking about how we represent the fact that you know, really until the Franco-Prussian War, units would shoot at each other and they certainly do damage. But in the Franco-Prussian War, units got decimated by long-range fire. Uh, and so you know, will the game system support that? How do we represent it? You know, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting mm. questions. Uh, fortunately... The rules work with the uh, a lot of the, the special rules are on the army sheet rather than in the core rules themselves, and I designed that deliberately like that. So, the rules for skirmishes and squares appear on the Napoleonic army sheets rather than in the core rules, and the same kind of thing will apply. You know, the rules for uh, breech loading rifles uh, and Krupp's artillery will appear on the Franco Prussian War army sheets as special rules that modify the rules and reflect the special qualities of those weapons. War of the Roses ones would be the effect of longbows, you know, and, <coughs> and uh, breech, arrow storms. Breach loading rifles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, the question is, would you be able to then match up the armies <laughs> and try <laughs> your uh, War of the Roses army against a Franco Prussian War army? Uh, possibly not, <laughs> 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 really. Uh, but uh, so they'll probably be, you know, like specific to each period. But I think the rule system themselves would mm, work. I think it would. Yeah. yeah. So we've got some gaming videos where you go over the basics of the game. But if people would like to see it in person, is there anywhere they can do that? Well, the, probably the best thing is go along to Partizan, which is in October. So it might have already been by the time you're seeing this. October the eighth. I wouldn't like to say, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> uh, and we'll we'll be there with a uh, Franco-Prussian War game. And uh, hopefully Jeffers will be there with the rules all uh, kind of brand new and shiny, uh, shiny not necessarily finished. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got lots of shiny new figures for that one as well? Though? I'm getting them painted at the moment, yeah. There's a lot I have to paint it, so it should have enough French. At the moment I've got uh, twice as so many Prussians I have French, so it might be... French London. on the defensive, though. Yeah, oh, well, they always were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But I don't think that's a problem. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so we'll be going along to walking mm. shows after that as well. I'm, I'm sure you'll see you'll see games being played, and I know <coughs> that there are other people out there 
you know, who are playing games, uh, you know, using the Banner and Fortitude rules. So hopefully, mm. if you look around, you'll easily be able to <coughs> find a game. Yep. Awesome. Well, there we go. Well, it all looks very good, and we've got this table set up now, so we should probably take the cameras away and roll some dice or something. <laughs> right. But uh, thank you very much for chatting <laughs> with right. us, and uh, yeah, we'll be back to see what's happening with Valor and Fortitude 3 soon. <laughs> 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 This video has been brought to you by WI Prime, Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.